Okay, guys, so I finally got home from my week on the road, and uh, so this was something that was specifically requested um, to see how the video card runs on a, um, on a on a more normal system, or at least older. This is older high end, but it's it's not it's it's not expensive hardware anymore. This is this build is should be somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred dollars if you get creative in your part sourcing. If you try to buy these parts off Amazon or you try to go to Best Buy or BestBuy.com and buy off of some marketplace or something, yeah, you're gonna pay more. But if you're if you're creative and you source it through your local markets, <coughs> or <coughs> dang it. <coughs> Or you uh, you snap up a deal on eBay. It shouldn't be hard to obtain this for somewhere around five hundred dollars, and I that's that's solidly budget, and that is that is the lowest end systems I've sold for a long time. So I'm not going to try to experiment with lower than that. I'm sorry, I I understand there's people who can't get better hardware, but um, there's there's a point at which I got to say, okay, this is this is where. You know, this is this is such affordable hardware at this point that I mean, you're already talking same or better price than a uh, than a um, a console. Um, so this build, I guess I can go this route. Let's see here. So take a look at the AMD stuff. So it's a Radeon Pro W fifty five hundred. Uh, the video card is an eight gig. Actually, kind of surprised. 8 gig GDDR6 uh, video card. Um, there's all of that for anyone that cares about such things. Um, and then we are running it on a 10 core i9 9820X uh, CPU. Uh, there's no overclocking going on here, um, it's just a, a stock. Uh, obviously, it self overclocks, but there's no. I have not overclocked it myself, um, and the RAM is just a single, random stick of, of DDR4 I had laying around. Uh, I believe the board is capable of quad channel or something like that. It's not running anything like that right now. It's just a generic single stick of uh, of RAM that I had. I'm not trying to push this at all. We're just trying to build a generic system. Um, so let's go back here. So take a look at, so we are running, so first, uh, we are running 1080p. If you're looking for anything less than like, I mean, honestly, for a modern game like this, I mean, you can run it, but if, if you're looking to run 1440p or even 4K, you're going to be running, you're going to be wanting to run, you know, an actual gaming card. This is this is providing a solid 1080p, and that's where that's where a card like this is. It's a solid 1080p experience. So we're looking at uh, AMD FX Super Resolution 2.1. That's on quality, and that is cranking up on a high setting. So it is solidly in the high setting. Um, as you can see. Um, it it's smooth my opinion on uh on cyberpunk might be a little controversial on this but my opinion is cyberpunk looks fine down to like 30 fps in most cases um if if you can hold it solid if it's dropping below 30 fps then going above then going below then going above then going way below then way above and just all over the damn place it's gonna look jerky but if, if your system is able to hold it at around 30 plus, or at the very least not drop below 30, um, you're, you're gonna look good. You could even, uh, if you wanna prevent some of the jerking, you could even uh, you could even lock it to say like, like if the lowest it goes is 30 and the highest it goes is 40, you could just lock it at 30 and it would probably look smooth. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's lock us at, can I do it? Those are weird VSync numbers. 93, 140. It's 280 hertz monitor. But yeah, it doesn't look. The only thing I can really do is. 
guess I can crank crank the settings. Well, let's go to ultra. Let's kill that. Okay, so let's see what it does on Ultra. Yeah, actually, it's still pretty smooth. Yeah, like I said, I, I liked running it on the high setting because it gave just a little bit more wiggle room for the uh, for, for the performance to drop a bit. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's capable of Ultra, which means you're probably going to get, um, like I said, this is not a 1440p gaming experience setup. Okay, but that being said, if the monitor that you have that you want to plug it into is a 1440, I mean, you probably get like 1440 medium 60 FPS or better. Um, or, or maybe, maybe high at, at a lower frame rate like this. So let's do this now. So typically I find that when I hop on a vehicle or when I hop on the bike, and I'm viewing all the, uh, well, where's my bike? When I'm viewing at high speed, it, it tends to seem to be a bit more of a, uh, a bit more of a draw on the system. So let's see. We, yeah, see, frame rate's going down, but let's see if it stays smooth. Yeah, it's staying pretty smooth. Yeah, see, it's low, but it's not, um, it's not bad. Probably, I would probably leave it at, at higher medium um, for uh, for 1080, just because I don't think the actual visual quality loss is that bad. Um, but to tie into to what this, this card is all about, though, this specific card that I got, I mean, this is this is a video card that's been sitting in a in a casino slot machine for I don't know, I don't know how long they. I don't know when the card went in. I'm not on the slots team, so I don't I don't know a lot about it other than occasionally a cool piece of hardware comes through and I mess around with it. Um, but uh, I mean, this has been sitting on in a slot machine for you know it could have been could have been from nearly the beginning of, of the uh, the six thousand series tech. So this could have been sitting in the slot machine for two or three years at this point. But, I mean, it's definitely, let's put it back on, let's put us on high quality, like that up, let's do motion blur off, lens flare off, depth of field, film grain off, okay, so we should be back up to, yeah, see, we're back up to that solid 45, 55. Once I get off the bike, you'll probably be back to like 60 plus. So, and keep in mind, this is not on my 13900K. So this is a this is a what has what is now considered a joke of a chip. X299 is is a dead platform. Nobody wants it anymore, and they're affordable. I mean, you can find. I found an entire X299 on uh, on Craigslist. I can't remember if it was this. I can't remember what chip it was. I think it might have been a little bit. It might have been like an i9-7900X or 7920X or whatever, something like that. But I think it was either an 8-core or a 10-core i9. And the guy had it listed for like, like 399 or something, I think, for the whole... It didn't have a GPU, granted, but $400, I mean, consider market value on this card. Well, market, I mean, you wouldn't buy this card. Market value on a 1080 Ti is, depending on where you get it, as low as $150. So you pair it with a 1080 Ti. You have an X299 with a 1080 Ti for $550. I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. That's that's nuts that you can get that. Which is why I also, I, I find all these people saying hardware, oh, hardware's crazy expensive. Like, that's not the world I live in. I do not live in a world where hardware is crazy expensive. I live in a world where you can get awesome hardware like this for like 500 bucks. I mean, come on, guys. That's a latte money at this point. I mean, really. Um, anyway, though, hope you guys like kind of a, a little more. Oh, let's do one more thing. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. I always thought the night view. Oops, that's not what I want here. I want to go night. Uh, I want to change this. Uh, okay, let's skip some time. Let's go to evening. Let's go 11.30 p.m. Let's see what that does. Yeah, no, it's still looking good. So, if you've stayed around this long, I'll do a separate video on this, but don't buy this video card. I commented on this to somebody the other day, uh, or not the other day, uh, earlier today. I commented, somebody asked me where, you know, where do they get the card? And this, don't, do not buy this card. Not at, not at market value. If you find one for like 30 bucks or something at, at an office auction or something like that, oh yeah, all day long. And it's a really interesting card because it's it's an unusually small size card for what it is. It's a dimension you don't really get a gaming card in because it's a single slot, like the old 8800 GT from like 2008. Um, but at market value, unless you absolutely have to have a single slot card, and there may be there may be better options for that even. But at market value, this isn't a good deal. It's a curiosity. As, as, a, as a video card I ripped out of the casino, it's really cool, it's a curiosity, but please, for the love of God, all the people watching this video, do not buy this video card. I'm, I'm going to make a video titled, Do Not Buy This Card. It's just not a good value. Um, a 1080 Ti would be a better value. A, uh, I mean, a 3080 would be a better value. You can get 3080 for... $350 if you look in the right place. Those are actual gaming cards. But if you happen to come into one of these, like somebody gives you an old workstation out of the office or something, it's an awesome little card to mess around with. It's just not a good value at market value. So take that for what it's worth. But I'm, I'm having fun playing around with it because I would never go on eBay or Amazon and buy one of these. It, I'm, I, it's just not my thing. But um, anyway, I hope you guys find this interesting and kind of a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a, um, a performance frame point for what this can actually do and how capable this card really actually is. Because this is, it's, it's, it's really impressive. It really is. And again, like I said, um, single slot, normal length cards. So not one of these ultra long beefy cards. So keep that in mind. Anyway, thanks for watching the video.